In the book of Revelation, in uh, chapter 22 there, in verse 14, there, there is a very extraordinary statement. And I want to just read it to you just to get us underway today. And it said, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And today I want to talk to you about what, what we can glean from a statement like that. I've called this talk today, You Matter. And, and what I mean by saying that today is you're, you're sitting there on your couches perhaps and uh, we're all sort of looking forward to seeing each other again, or I hope you are. And you, uh, we're all in various stages of our faith and our walk with the Lord and dealing with life. And there are times in our lives where we might have a need where you're waiting for a diagnosis or you've got some sort of uh, impediment to your physicality or whatever it is. And, and we all have our times where we sort of wonder whether God's forsaken us perhaps or whether we're important to him. And I, I guess what I want to say to you today is you matter more than you realize to God. You know, in the scripture, the scripture itself is an indicator of that. You know, we're told in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God for doctrine, for reproach, for correction, for righteousness. Now that is written there so that people that have been ushered into his kingdom like, like you and I that have received the Holy Spirit can embrace what we've got, can embrace who we are, can embrace the, the fact that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you. You matter to God. And you may have times in your life where you're, you're feeling a bit uncertain. But what I want to encourage you about today, and I say that again, for God so loved the world that God so loved you that having received the Holy Spirit, the depth of his love for you really is unfathomable it's really difficult to comprehend how much god cares about you now it's interesting in scripture there are many things that i want to say but we're going to go to john chapter 4 and i want to just read probably something that you would know because i read this little passage of scripture and this is where jesus met the woman at the well and I just want to con constantly say, and I, I can't say it enough, never underestimate how much you matter to the Lord. And it says here, and at verse 21, And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now what I want to say to you is, you know, just extracting a few thoughts out of those four verses. This is not talking about a place. The world of Christianity and many people that are even spirit-filled just don't understand, you know, that the temple has become you. Knowing God is not about Jerusalem. Knowing God is not about a building. Knowing God is about you. And he's made you to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. The second point I want to make from those four verses, and you can read them at your leisure, of course. There is no uncertainty in God's theology. There's no uncertainty. When you receive the Holy Spirit, like, we're, like we see and, and experience, we become witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of course. But when you look into Acts 2.38, and where it says there to repent, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit, the uncertainty is diminished, is deleted. Not only does he make you the temple of the Holy Spirit, because you matter, he makes you matter, but you now have no uncertainty about knowing God, because he cares about you. He wants you to know him. 
You know, there's no second guessing anymore. We don't need to go back to the book and, and, and try to extrapolate how we get to know God because we know God. In one sense, you never need to read the Bible again if you've got a vibrant prayer life. And I'm not recommending you don't. I'm just making the point that because you matter, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because you matter, there's no more second guessing God's theology. The third point I want to make, it's what God wants that matters. And he's told you that. He's shown you that. He's given you that. You know, we have a world of religion that extrapolate all kind of crazy ideas and, and, uh, and their variations on a theme. And, and for many religions, and uh, it's all about traditions and I was born this way and, and I'm going to stay this way. But because you matter, you've been made the temple of the Holy Spirit. You've been taken away out of uncertainty and you've been given this ability to understand that you have been infilled and taken away and you do what God wants you to do. And that's our walk in the Lord. And the, fir- the fourth point I want to make about this is that there's no other way. And you know that because you've received the Holy Spirit. One faith, one baptism, one hope, one joy, one directive, one conclusion. And the conclusion is that God loves you. I just want to read you a verse, and there's no scripture coming up on the screen for this. Revelation 3, it says, Him that overcometh, him that overcometh, this is, this is how much you matter to God. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. You know, our sisters there were talking about the peace that passes all understanding. You have been made a pillar in the temple of the Holy Spirit, in the temple of your Creator, and you don't, the search is over. You don't need to go out anymore, you rediscover God. You have arrived when you've received the Holy Spirit. And I will write upon him, this is you, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem. You matter to God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have been anointed. You are the Christos, the Ecclesia. You have been brought into the understanding that you are the new Jerusalem. So in your moments of doubt, in your moments where you're uncertain, in your moments where you're a little bit fearful of an outcome, I want you to remember you matter. And the most important thing about those two words is who you matter to. You matter to God. You know, I want to read, a, we're going to read through a passage of Scripture, and this is Galatians 5, and you're probably going to think it's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but I'll bring you back to why, why I'm reading that, of course. And it says here, so this is in verse 1 of uh, Galatians chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. Just think about that verse. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Christ, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did, hinder, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that called you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but she that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, I yet preach circumcision. Why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would that you were even cut off 
from that which trouble you. All right, we're just going to stop there for a minute. And I just want to explain something there, that this is the Apostle Paul, obviously writing to the church at Galatia. And what was happening there in this particular time, in the context of these verses, was that people were struggling with realizing who they were. And the reason for this is that the, uh, there was a sect of Judaism. These are called the Judai- Judaizers. They were throwing curveballs at the early Christian church. And they were saying things, no, you've got to be lawful. No, you've got to be traditional. No, you've got to do this, this, and this, and this. And what the Apostle Paul was saying here was don't listen to them. You've been inspired. You've been empowered by the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in you. You matter to the Lord. Step away from from the Orthodox. Step away from theology. Don't allow yourselves to, 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 to take a step back from the inspiration of God. And the reason I'm saying this today is that here was this, this section of the church and this particular part at the time struggling, struggling to realize the spiritual connection that they had. And, and our Lord there, through, through the Apostle Paul, is reminding them, as it says there in verse 1, Don't get tied up with dogma. Don't get tied up with where you used to be. Realize that you've been born again. Realize that the the traditions of, of the world that are being thrown at you aren't for you. And don't forget who you are because you matter to the plan and purpose of God. You know, sometimes we, you know, we give talks, and I was mentioning this to the pastors. We're going to say a little bit about this later on. But sometimes we, we, I mention often, I guess, the First Corinthians, I think it's one twenty-six about see your calling. And sometimes we, we've, 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 you know, we can be bound up with some issue or, we, or a relationship or, or, or an ailment or something like that. And we can forget in the midst of that uh, Calamity, in a sense, or that's, you know, nine times out of ten, we build it up to be bigger than it is. But in the midst of that moment or that burden or whatever you want to call it, we can forget that we have been called to his purpose. We have been called, as we started off reading, we have the right, the authority, the power to the tree of life. And we can get caught up in our own heads and we can get caught up in our own thinking. And we can forget just who we are in Christ and who he's made us to be. And we're reminded here, as the church of Galatia were, to stand fast in the liberty, the freedom, the knowledge of eternity and that we matter to God. He's called us to his purpose. He's called us to be influential He hasn't called us to spend our times wallowing, even in your moments. Preach the gospel. Even in your moments, have your leaflets ready. I'm amazed with my mother, for example, in her her few moments in life where she spent time in hospital, she'd ring me up and say say to me, Simon, can you bring some leaflets in? You know, because people are, are wired. She was wired like that. Because it's not just about what God gives us. It's about what we are giving back. We are the representatives of God's power on earth in 2020. On earth during COVID-19. On earth, our job is to show people that we've embraced our purpose. And our purpose is to preach the gospel. You know, and in this wonderful passage of scripture here, part of the understanding is that, uh, you know, when you have a look at Acts, it talks there about save yourselves from this untoward generation. You know why it says that? Because you matter to God. And he wants you to embrace the Holy Spirit. And he wants you to embrace your purpose. And he wants you to be influential to your next door neighbor. And as we're coming out of this world of COVID and and we're getting back face to face and and we've had all sorts of, we've just had wall-to-wall fellowship. 
You know, in the sense, you know, and, you, and we've been lying on the couch and listening to each other preach and being encouraged. What I'm saying to you is, if you haven't picked up on the fact that through all that wonderful ministry that you matter to God, you've been sleeping at the wheel. You matter to God because when we receive the Holy Spirit, we become part of the purpose and plan of God. And your job and my job is to shine our lights for the Lord. Our Lord needs us to shine in this ever-increasing dark place. It's our job. It's our opportunity. I just want to read for you a bit more. We got down to uh, verse 13 now. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. And there's a reminder. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the Lord is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. And remember, it's because Christ first loved us, because you matter. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Now, I'm not, this, I'm not reading this to have a bark at you guys or anybody or all the people that aren't here here today. What I'm saying here is that our Lord is so magnificent and so aware of the fact that, that, that we matter to him that he gives us instruction. This is the inspiration of God. He's reminding the church at Galatian and vicariously he's reminding us to, to, to remember that we've got to stand fast in the perfect law of liberty. And it goes on here and it's talking about the theologies of, the, of Judaism and circumcision and all of these things that really once you receive the Holy Spirit have got nothing to do with it. And the, and the wonderful thing here is it then talks about love. See, our Lord doesn't want us to, to, to have some sort of vacuum in our understanding. He wants us, as he wanted the church in Galatia, to embrace their purpose, to understand that as you're fighting with each other, you've forgotten how much you matter. How much you matter to God's purpose. And it goes on here. This I say, this is verse 16 now, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, lust, uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. So there's all these concepts going on here. This is a repudiation of, of traditional religions. This is uh, 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 the Apostle Paul, you know, the Lord, the Apostle Paul saying to the Galatians, come on, get your act together. Stop fighting amongst each other. You've forgotten your purpose. Get out there and get cracking and show me to people. Realize that you matter to the plan and purpose of God. And here we go. It digs deep now. It gets into the ugliness of all of the things that you shouldn't do. And you know why it does that? Because God wants you to know. God wants you to know that when you've received the Holy Spirit, you don't walk in the flesh anymore. You are spiritual. You represent the glory of God. You represent the purity of God. You represent the authority of God, the honesty of God, and that we don't defile the temple. And so, so why I'm saying this today is that you can read these verses. I'm taking it back to the context for a specific reason. You can read these verses and you go, my, you go, oh, horrors, I can't do this, I can't do that. No, the Lord wants you to read these verses because you matter. There's explanation here of what was going on in the church. There's explanation, there's context here. It's not just about walking around and, 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 and being a square person that, and don't have any fun or whatever. This is about you understanding that you matter to the Lord and that we don't defile the temple, that we live righteously, that we show the glow of the Holy Spirit through our lives. I'm going to read further here. 
It says, verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. And I'm not going to go through what all those things mean. That's it's it's a, another talk in a sense. I've got a different reason for reading this out today. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in the times past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the verse we started on today, the kingdom of God. You will lose your right to the, key, to the tree of life if you do these things. Now, is this here because God wants to ruin your life? Or is this here because you matter to God? And he wants you to live righteously. And he wants you to understand what's important. That, that our humanity is a disaster. And he's replaced our humanity with the wonderful inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he's done that because he loves us. He's done that because you matter. And then on top of that, to layer it, he showed us the understanding of how to go about this. And it's in the next verses here. Verse 22. But, but, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. Against, against such, there is no law. And what that means is, when you're walking in the Spirit, it's unbridled. The fruit of the Spirit, all of those qualities, which is the nature of God, when you embrace the fact that you matter, and these things have been put there for us to access, or been put here for us to access, these qualities... These virtues of God are unbridled. And this is the understanding that we should have as spirit-filled people. As we grow in the spirit, it's not just about how much you, whether you can work a miracle, because we're told in Scripture, though I speak with a ton of the, the, the tongues of men and angels and I can work miracles, I'm nothing unless I've got God, God's agape love in us. What this is saying here is that's the world... That's the ideology and the theology of the world. Get back to your first love. Walk in the Spirit. Embrace the liberty of the Holy Spirit. And thank the Lord that you matter so much to God that he gives us this instruction. And when you walk in it, when you relish it, you know, what is it, Philippians 4, it says, whatsoever things are honest and peaceful and all those things, think on these things. When you embrace the qualities and virtues of God that are extraordinary, you will change because God wants you to change because you matter to God. Our Lord wants you in the first resurrection. Our Lord wants you to shine. Our Lord wants your temple and your body to represent his glory. And that's where we want to head. It says in verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. No, that's, what, that's all the way it used to be. You are now born again. You've been given this wonderful outlook of the Holy Spirit. I just want to make a few comments Religion is founded on rituals that don't curb behavior, but rather make excuse for bad behavior. That's a fact. You know, you, you do the deed, you do the time, you do the crime, you go and sit in the little box and say whatever you're going to say and then go and do it again. True Christianity implants us with a spiritual incentive to not even in entertain impurity. The greatest prayer you can have is to be Christ-like. That's it. That's it. And the instruction of Scripture, there's a plethora of it. It's all there for you and I.
to embrace because it's there because you matter to the Lord. We shouldn't feel challenged but or bound by such. This is the perfect law of liberty. We don't have to run with the foxes and the hounds, so to speak. We don't have to let our humanity run rampant. We are chaste. We are holy. We have godly virtue. And it's something that we should be proud of. Not hiding it away. You know, if you're hiding away, that means you, you, you're not equally yoked with your own thoughts. We should feel honored to uphold wholesomeness and be kind and nice and caring and all those kinds of things. The selfless love of Christ. We've been called to represent the wonder of God in a world that is determined to misrepresent his intent. For most people, they haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. They haven't got a clue what it means to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. They haven't got a clue that you can actually know God. You matter because we, you and I, are the conduit to people knowing God. It's so important to understand that. Galatians, we just go further down into verse, uh, the next chapter, verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. That's talking about people within the church looking out for each other. Be not deceived. God is not mocked that for what's, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And what that's basically saying is embrace the fact that you matter. And if you're struggling, do, do better. And if, you, if you've got a prayer, thank the Lord that you matter to him. I'm going to read another verse or two here and then we'll finish. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You know, what I'm talking about to he here is being spirit-filled is not what you do on Sunday. It's not what you do when you're feeling like you're up to it. It's about the life that you live. It's about the person that you have allowed the Lord to make you to be. And the easiest way to embrace what I'm talking about today, you know, when you're having your times, when you're having your struggles, when you're having your moments, and we do all have them. Remember that you matter to the Lord. You are his workmanship. I'll just read you a couple of things here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's because you matter. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Let him help you, because you matter to him. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. It's extraordinary when you think about it. You know, I want you to just think about this as we finish off now. You are extraordinary. Because God is in you. You are exquisite. Because God has recreated you. And what we've got to embrace and remember, it all happened because God cares about you. That he so loved the world that he sent his son because you matter. And all the people said...